isolated into your region, you can see what other people are saying about that topic in other regions and what their issues are. And if they're similar to yours, you can engage in discussions. We're not saying you can only talk in your own region's forums, and we're currently tossing up whether or not we should identify when people are out of region. Yes. You know, it's basically to distinguish between the people who are in the community and discussing it, and someone who comes in and say, and either pretends that they're part of the community, mm -hmm. or is otherwise, you know, contributing. And we're not sure whether we're going to identify them or not, because once you identify who's out of a region, you're automatically identifying who's in a region. Um, and uh, we don't know whether that's going to be a privacy consideration in some places, which don't have particularly large populations, like Christmas Island. Well, that's, that's also one of our challenges. You know, people live in one region, work in another, their schools are in a third. You know, so there are challenges like that we've kind of got to work through, but that's part of the, when you put lines on that and say you're in this group and you're in that group, and you're actually not, you have to work out how you actually manage that. So we're trying to do that through, you know, modern web technologies, which allows us to, you know, assign people that. Initially, we've got everybody in one, you know, when you register, you define which region you're in. Over time, we might actually ask people if they want to decide um, a secondary region or a tertiary region. Say, well, I'm normally in this region, but, you know, I work here or I go to school here. Oh, sorry, Craig. Um, I think this is a fantastic initiative, and I love online community engagement, and that's an area that I'm working. However, I, and I do it all the time, I wouldn't be prepared to say that Australia is ready to shift entirely to online engagement. No. Um, and and it's not. so I wonder. I mean, it's a very it's a, it's a very easy win in a way um, to to get a few people online, look at what they say, and use that to inform policy. How will the government or the department be consulting? Like, will you still be consulting, or do you have a, a consultation program to include those people who won't be consulting online for whatever reason? Yeah, always. You know, we, we, we're not adding these new tools and turning off the old ones. Um, I don't think, uh, with most things online, you know, it doesn't replace offline. It, it's a value add. Um, what it does do is it, I, I actually think that online actually gets you a broader perspective from the population than just doing offline, you know, town hall style consultations do. I, that's actually been a point of contention government for a few years. They always said, oh, it's only a niche audience online. And I keep saying, well, it's only a niche audience who goes to the town hall meetings. Yeah, I was reading the town hall meetings when you want to bed them. Yeah, but the people who are unemployed or retired or, you know, otherwise don't have young children to look after or aren't working late or shift workers. They're the people who can actually make the time that you set that you as a government department decide you'll have for town hall meetings. Whereas with online engagement, people can engage at any time that is convenient to them. So for starters, you get a much broader distribution. And when I was running Your Health a couple of years ago, one of the things I was really happy with is we got a number of um, people with mental disabilities who were, who were commenting online. And some of them were terrible grammatically and, and really poorly spelt, but they got their message across. And they were not capable of going to a physical, you know, town hall meeting and getting their views across, but they could do it online. And, and look, that's absolutely right. I, I would object a little bit to the, the comparison between the online stuff and the town hall meeting because people have been doing really, really good community consultation, well, true. not using true. town hall meetings for, for a very long yeah. time and getting very good results. And it's a little bit unfair to compare it to the town hall meeting because a lot of online consultation is just an online town hall meeting. Yes. And, and so... Well, that's one of the reasons why you do compare them. That's the, you're saying there's similar term. types of approaches. I uh, yeah, but I yeah. don't... All right, I think there are many, many more effective... There are many other techniques as well. I'm not, dis okay. I'm not disputing or discarding them. I'm just specifically using that example. Um, but, you know, as always, you should use multiple of channels I'm saying if you're using an online channel, this is something that will give you some longer term business intelligence over time. Again, we're right at the beginning. It's, it's a maybe. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, thank you. Thanks,